What's going on everyone? Charlie here. We're going to continue on looking at the history of GameStop. We're going to travel now from 2002 to 2006 and take a look at some important events and things that went down. So last time, of course, we looked at the underwriters for GME being UBS Group AG and the um, basically Citigroup or Solomon um, and some interesting points there. And uh, we looked at their positions at the time uh, as far as globally. They're both, you know, big leaders. We know that UBS has, uh, or I'm sorry, Solomon has now incorporated themselves within the Citigroup Global Markets Incorporated. So still very relevant today. Now we'll take a look at how GameStop's ownership expands through 2002 and through 2005 and some uh, key events that took place in the market itself. So the first notable um, mutual fund that showed up um, with anyone relevant in it came out in April 30th of 2002, shortly after GameStop became public. Of course, you see a Citigroup and Lehman Brothers on here. Um, this is a mutual fund, again, about 3.5% of their assets um, was owned by Citigroup and then 3.1% by Lehman Brothers. So you see the underwriter right there, Citigroup uh, connected to the mutual fund that is connected to GameStop. So then in uh, December 18th of 2002, JPMIF, a, uh, another mutual fund owned by JP Morgan, added a uh, position as well. And actually, if you look today at their top 10 holdings, um, they have a similar fund to what we see from BlackRock, Federal National Mortgage Association. Uh, the underwriter is still there. We have Citigroup, uh, part of this, uh, this fund now. United States Treasury Bonds. Mortgage Association, then we have UBS. So both underwriters are, are in this JP Morgan mutual fund with GameStop. So keep that in mind. So notable events from 2004 to October of 2005. Um, who remembers Movie Stop? <laughs> Remember that? It was a retailer of new and used movies and related uh, merchandise. It was founded in 2004 as a division of GameStop. Um, GameStop. GameStop spun off Movie Stop to private owners in 2012 at which point I believe it uh, ceased to exist in 2016. So uh, later on, GameStop acquired EB Games, uh, formerly Electronics Boutique, in 2005 for $1.44 billion, where they remain a subsidiary of GameStop today. The acquisition expanded GameStop's operations into Europe, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. Pretty cool. So starting October, some significant changes happened as far as GME and the uh, overall market mechanics. So on October 5th, 2005, GameStop was added to the Unlisted Trading Privileges Plan, granting participants access to the ADF facility. Now, the UTP plan and the ADF facility I've covered on this channel before. Um, I have playlists set up throughout my channel that you're welcome to go look at in various different languages to, uh, to see what I'm talking about here. But basically, the ADF is an alternative display facility. It's a secondary quotation book that retail does not see, and it takes up over... 40% of the daily market volume today. Now, look right here. NASDAQ ADF, 42.62% of the daily market share. This was last Friday's measurement. So the closest, to keep this uh, put in perspective, the closest lit exchange to this NASDAQ ADF facility, I believe, is the NASDAQ itself, which averages around 16% on a daily basis. Yeah, right here, 15.61%. So the NASDAQ ADF is a dark pool, a quotation book, so to speak. They claim trades aren't done there, but clearly, looking at the data, it does show market share usage as well as volume or shares being matched. Now, the unlisted trading privileges plan, this is exhibit N-2, NYSE, and Amex UTP issues by issuer name as of 8905. So keep this date in mind, 8905, GameStop and GameStop B. So GameStop.B is Class B shares. Thank you to the subs who pointed that out for me. So interestingly enough, the very same or the, the very next week, GameStop FTDs first started to appear on October 11th, 2005. Again, the very next week after they were added to the UTP plan or the Unlisted Trading Privileges Plan. So on, on October 11th, 2005, the count of uh, FTDs was 898,491. The following day, it peaked at 1.25 million failed to delivers. And then if you look at the graph, the link's right here in the PowerPoint that I'll link below. 
Uh, we did not see these levels again until 2012. So, um, by the way, if you wanted to look at a pretty interesting document, this is a reply from the SEC back in February 17th of, 26, uh, of 2006, basically discussing uh, these, these instruments called pipes, which is a uh, very manipulative, according to the commenter, thought it was being used to manipulate new companies, new startup companies by, uh, of course, manipulative short sales. So just wanted to uh, point this out. And again, keep in mind that also on 2006, I'm going to show you this real quick. I brought this up in a previous video, but there was an offering uh, in 2006. I think I believe actually this was uh, GameStop's very, very first um, prospectus after they went public, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, as far as a proxy, or I'm sorry, not a proxy, but a, a DEF-14A. So they offered 6.5 uh, million shares, of course. And of course it was through Citigroup, the main underwriter, you know, previously Salomon. And uh, they, they mentioned naked short selling in here. Uh, you know, that says that Citigroup may sell shares uh, short, naked, at which point they would have to go and cover it in the market. Yeah, right. We know that's not ever going to happen, at least not until they're forced to do so. And then they say that it's more likely to be created if Citigroup is concerned that there may be downward pressure on the price of the shares in the open market after pricing that could adversely affect investors. So there you have it. Um, you know, tidbits of information is all out there. It's all related. Um, it's crazy. So we looked at uh, 2002 to through 2006, and we'll pick up at 2007 when things start getting crazy with the, the uh, 2008 crisis. So talk to you all next time.